Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I can finally tell you what the big secret was. I didn't want to say anything over the last couple of videos due to the fact that, well, I wanted to make sure it was a done deal. And now it is official. I now own this mountain and the rest of this property. We were here back in April 6th and we were checking out the property, see how things were doing while we were gone. But the number one reason for us to uh, come out was to actually take a look at the little cabin. And I'll show you the cabin here in just a minute. Why did I decide to buy another 128 acres on top of the 158 acres I already own? Trust me, it wasn't something I really wanted to do. A while back, I talked about the utilities on the property and uh, where they stood. I was trying to get a hold of the neighbor uh, who doesn't live there full time. He lives in another state. And so I finally, through the power company, was able to get in touch with him and actually speak to him on the phone. And when I asked him about the fact that uh, I wanted to run a power line from the back side of his property along up over where we want to build a shop just over to your uh, left there, he said no. Yeah, so I was like, it's underground. It doesn't, you know, it's only a five foot underground easement, but he said no. So after he said no, he mentioned that he was willing to sell the property. And I thought to myself, okay, I'll buy the property, get that easement, then turn around to sell the property. Uh, although that's a very small percentage chance of that now, because I have a lot of other plans. The fact that now I'll be able to get power right over here. Uh, the second thing is, the really big issue is at the far end of this property, there's two right of ways to this piece of land that's up on top of a mountain. And it's really steep. It's like an old logging road. And it's just, I mean, you can't get a car up there. You barely can get a four by four up there, meaning pickup truck. And so when we came here in April, we actually drove our car and our car has very little ground clearance. It's a Hyundai. And so it has very little ground clearance. So the second thing I was thinking about was after getting the utility easement brought over here, I could also put in a right of way from that driveway on around to this right here. And then lastly, I was thinking, you know, why not take down this fence? It gives me another 500 feet of, of runway area, not that I really need it, but there's also, it, it goes up quite steep there. So I could take out a lot of that dirt there and this here area mounts up a little bit high and shove that into that low spot and, and widen that. And now that I got a bulldozer, I can do that. So I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just section off a piece of land. And originally when we bought this property, I was thinking about making just a hangar house and the house on the far side that's looking down the valley. Well, the views on top of that mountain is absolutely gorgeous. Here, I'll show you one right now. So this shot is taken from just behind those first row of trees right there. And then in winter time with the leaves off, you could see the amazing view. You could see the whole strip, everything. So then I got thinking, you know what? Well, I'll just keep this land right here, build a small cabin just behind those trees there and probably a garage down on this area because it's, it gets kind of steep there. Uh, so either walk up or get a four wheeler or little gator or something like that to go up. But, uh, yeah, so that's, that's what I was thinking. Well, me being a business minded person, uh, I took it a few steps further and saying, you know what, maybe in the future, I might want to have, uh, some friends or people in the area that want to have a hangar here and fly in and out. So besides my shop, which will fit a King Air 250, 200, uh, in there. I was thinking, well, maybe they put a couple more hangers here or maybe over there a couple hangers. Like I talked about an Airbnb, uh, it'd just be a little cabin, you know, a little off-grid cabin with that amazing view. So people could fly in, put their plane in the hangar, stay here. As you can hear, there's nothing but wind. Uh, occasionally you hear some birds chirping. Uh, we do have a lot of deer. I wouldn't be surprised if a deer goes running across here behind me saw it the other day we've got a lot of projects on the house uh, i'll show you that in another video uh, walking through the house or cabins really what it is uh, i've gotten in contact with the guy who's going to be um, mowing this and getting the hay off of it for now uh, so that helps me to be farm exempt for the property taxes this one already is he's already been cutting the uh, 
the grass on there are making hay that qualifies for farm set exempt. So this one's already farm set exempt, and this one is also farm set exempt because I just need to have him come over here and start cutting the hay. And in the state of West Virginia, as long as you've got a thousand dollars of revenue per year, you qualify for farm set exempt. And eventually, I'll grow some vegetables and things like that that I may sell off. So, as of right now, we've decided to keep the two properties and the main reason why is by having a house here that we've already moved into we can just drive down from Pittsburgh uh, on my days off and work on the property and get little things done uh, before you start into the big big projects one of the things I need to do is I need to service a bulldozer what's going to happen over the next few months is we're going to get that utility easement brought over here got the power guy coming out tomorrow to walk it off with me and then I'm going to get a hold of a surveyor so that we can set up a uh, right-of-way coming from that county road around this property here onto this property here so there's a lot of reasons why I decided to go ahead and buy this property and it wasn't just for the utility easement. Right now there's almost no way to get cement mixing trucks up that right of way back there. It's, it's really a logging road is what it is. And so it's so steep and not graded very well. It'd be very difficult to get those cement trucks up here for pouring the foundation for that large shop. By having it come right up that county road and right up the driveway, those trucks can make it up no problem. It's a nice smooth driveway. I'll show you what that looks like while I'm talking. So as you can see, it's, it's not as steep and it's a nice smooth right away. I will have to smooth out this tractor trail is what I'm going to call it. Uh, you could get a big truck across it, uh, no problem. I'm going to drive the bulldozer across there today, taking the bulldozer over to the house so that I can uh, service it because uh, I bought it, drove it up here, parked it, and that's where it's been sitting for the last uh, few months. I did that back in November and we are now in July. Today is July 15th. Snowshoe's just six miles south of here. I may talk to the people up there at Snowshoe, the investors, and see if they want to go in on this property with me and maybe pave it. I don't know. We'll, we'll just see if that's something that they want to do. Uh, or maybe they want to put a hangar up here or something like that once we get the runway in. Or maybe they want to go in on me with the runway to help get that finished quicker. How long is it going to take to get the full length of this runway from that mountain all the way back done? I'd say at least the next three years because I, it'd just be me working on the bull, with the bulldozer. Unless I got some help out here, it's, it's going to take a long time. And that's just basically smoothing it out, making basically a smooth pasture, just a grassy area. And then I got to clear out an area over there so I can get a shop so that whenever I'm ready to start building airplanes, I'll have that available. Anyways, I got a couple of projects I need to get to, a couple of down trees, and I want to do it before it starts getting too hot, so I'm going to get onto that. I'm going to end the video there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Just remember, it doesn't cost you a dime. It sure helps out the channel. Greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, guys.